Well, the real influence comes from the fact that investors think it might one day go from being a passive investment to something much more active, potentially a buyout. And investors, you noted the stock is way up, are excited about that because Twitter has been rather stagnant for the past few years. While its competitors are getting ahead in things like Web3 and the metaverse, even subscriptions, Twitter has dipped its toes into those things, but it hasn't really made massive, massive progress. I think investors are excited about the potential shakeup here, although I would argue in the short term that passive stake isn't going to wield too much influence. We haven't even heard Elon Musk comment on this yet. We haven't heard many comments from Twitter, Steve, no. uh, from Musk. Everyone well, we got love... something from Musk. We got an LOL high. True. Yes, <laughs> that's the comment from Musk. Well, what about, I mean, how does Jack Dorsey feel about this? What, how long ago did he leave the company and now? And he had, so, a few months ago. And he only has, what, a 2 or 3% stake? Right. And, well, here's the thing. You would think that Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey are kind of aligned in, in what Sarah is just describing. And we know the current CEO, Parag Agarwal, is also in, in line with that vision. So they're good there. With what vision? The, the Web3 and the uh, the decentralization version of Twitter that what they're building. What does that mean? <laughs> and it, I think uh, Nilay Patel explained it really well on Tech Check. It basically means like they can create these separate versions of Twitter that's not controlled by Twitter itself. So you can basically write your own policies on top of that. So if you oh. want, if Elon Musk wants his like crazy free speech, anything goes version of Twitter, he can like write it on top of that. That's kind of the theory. Or, you know, what we've seen so many people doing from the, the true social Trump-backed thing all the way down to Gab from a few sure. years ago, people try to create these, like, far-right or free speech, anything goes versions of Twitter, and they fail horrifically every But I'm time. surprised, and I'm glad, I mean, it's a good point, that's why I wanted to dwell on right. it for a moment, that that Musk and the current CEO, or certainly Dorsey, would be aligned on anything. I mean, they seem politically so different, Dorsey and Musk. Sure, that politically, it, yeah. I, I wonder, does Twitter really want to open the door to that kind of change to a platform that's basically part of the kind of traditional media landscape at this point. It right. leans generally left and kind of plays by all the same rules. And, and this would be a, a real big departure for them. I'm going to push back on the leaning left thing, because he, here's the thing why these like conservative versions of Twitter fail so often. It's because what's the conservative version of Twitter, Kelly? It's Twitter. What's the conservative version of Facebook? It's Facebook. You can find your own niche within there. And that's, you know, kind of my theory why these don't work out so well. So it's interesting to see Musk say, hey, I'm going to come in and just buy this 9% stake in the existing platform sure. and make the change from within. No, I, I agree, Sarah, with Steve's point that the rivals have not gained any traction. However, the problem with censorship, whether it was the Hunter Biden story or other, you know, they kicked Trump off the platform for crying out loud. Is Musk going to try to bring him back on or would DC centralized Twitter allow for that kind of return? Would they really, would it really look different than it does today is my question. Well, I think what's interesting, you noted this, is that Jeff Dorsey and Elon Musk, in a way, want the same thing. In moving towards a decentralized platform, you take away the controls from the few and you give it into the hands of the many. Now, what would that look like? It would require the community to start policing and creating rules for the platform. And Twitter has experimented with this. They introduced something called Birdwatch, which is sort of community moderation of content on the platform. I don't exactly know what that would look like because to date, the only big platform that has that is Wikipedia. And there's still a lot of problems with Wikipedia, despite the fact that there are a lot of advantages as well that's run actually through a nonprofit foundation. We've never seen a major social platform be completely governed by the masses. So unclear what that is going to be. I will say, if you take a big picture look, though, at Twitter for investors that are watching this show, this has been such a tumultuous time for the company. First, you had Elliott Management coming in as an activist investor, essentially forcing Jack Dorsey, their old CEO, out. Now, less than a quarter in, you have this new and in, you know major investor outside voice also one of your biggest platform users coming in potentially threatened to shake it up maybe buy out the platform if you are the ceo of twitter right now it must be very hard to think about the core tenets of your business product innovation monetization when you're trying to deal with all these corporate renewers, it's not a great place to be right now. I wonder, Sarah, so let's just quickly think through this. But let's call it a 10% stake for $3 billion. So you could buy the whole company for $30 billion. And there's plenty of people who could do that, you know, people on the scale of Jeff Bezos, you know, top 10 tech billionaires, people who want to throw their weight around and maybe make a point by saying we're not going to let Musk take it in a different direction uh, or take it private or, or what have you. Do you expect this to continue to escalate or do you think it's all going to die down and quiet down and go away in a few months time. Elon Musk doesn't like to de-escalate, so I do think that this fight will continue. But to your point about other billionaires coming in, 
Remember what Bob Iger said about whether Disney would buy Twitter. Twitter comes with a lot of baggage, whether you are an individual billionaire looking for influence or you're a major media or tech company. And I think a lot of people are going to feel allergic to getting too close to it, especially to your point at the top of the show, coming ahead of the midterms. The free speech debate can get so thorny. Yeah. I don't know that too many people are going to want to challenge Musk in this. The only thing I can imagine is, are other institutional investors that are backing Twitter going to try to square off with him? That, I think, is a little bit more likely.